Thank you for this wonderful invitation and opportunity to speak to you all tonight about something that I'm very passionate about. I'm not going to talk about a specific research project, but I do want to introduce the concept of inclusive capitalism and the necessary role of business to address some of the vexing global issues that we're challenged with. Now, this lady next to me is Gail Parks Forehand. And she's a graduate of the College of Business, and I'm not going to tell y'all when because she'd strangle me. But this was before, generally speaking, women were business majors. And uh, she's just truly a trailblazer, and I'm honored to hold her professorship. Now, many of you have probably noticed the shiny and let's just say it, ostentatious new building on the corner of Donahue and Magnolia. Um, and this is Horton Hardgrave Hall. Now, I know what a lot of y'all are thinking. We have a one-track mind in that shiny new building, and it's on profit. Keep it, grow it, count it, and let's face it, when you see that building, some of you may really see this. Yeah. So, while we're hanging out counting our money, there was a shift in culture a shift in attitude, especially among our young people. This free market system of capitalism has come under siege. And a Harvard study found that 51% of young people in the U.S. don't support capitalism. Now, honestly, this doesn't make sense. And folks in business have been very perplexed about this because the facts are on our side. So if you look, history tells us that people became really prosperous as a result of the Industrial Revolution, and countries that have embraced modern capitalist systems have experienced dramatic increases of income over time. And in fact, the other thing that we found is that uh, extreme poverty has drastically defined, declined over the last three decades to around 10%. And the places where poverty is the most persistent are the places that have weak market-based institutions. So with the facts and history on the side of capitalism, why the skepticism? Well, perhaps it's because there's a cost for prosperity. Social problems abound and young people today are faced with an uncertain future. And they've been conditioned around conventional logic. And that's that business makes a profit by causing social problems. And business has accepted that logic as well. And so to offset it, they set up film, philanthropic foundations that give money to nonprofits to deal with social problems. And they pay taxes to government so they can deal with the externalities that came from economic activity. So with the government intervention and so many nonprofits that exist today, why do the problems still persist and only seem to get worse? Well, one problem is the problem of scale. There's just not enough tax revenue or not enough charitable donations to adequately address so many of these problems. But here's the thing. It's completely lopsided logic to think that social problems are disconnected from business success. Businesses don't benefit from pollution or unsafe workplaces or dirty water. When people are sick and poor, businesses aren't better off. Weather-related disasters hamper supply chains and drive up costs. Healthy, thriving communities actually create new markets. A healthy planet ensures a stable supply of natural resources. And companies, especially the big global ones, well, they're starting to get it. So we're seeing a change in boardrooms and C-suites these days, and we're seeing a shift from the primacy of shareholders to the commitment to stakeholders. And just, realized, just recently, 
Almost 200 CEOs from the biggest public U.S. companies released a new statement of purpose. They advocated for a free market system as the best means for economic opportunity, but they made commitments to a broad range of stakeholders, including environmental protection. The last point they make is really imperative. They say, the commitment to generating long-term value for shareholders who provide the capital that allows companies to, ingress, to invest and grow and innovate. So there's several labels for it. Sheer value, conscious capitalism, compassionate capitalism, I've used the term inclusive capitalism, capitalism all are about meeting needs and solving problems and improving people's lives at a profit. There's magic in profit because it allows us to meet needs in an infinitely scalable way. And as the roundtable of these business executives emphasize, companies want to innovate and grow, and that creates the ability to scale. So now imagine if companies use this ability to address the fundamental problems that we face globally. What if companies use their organizational capacity to address health, or hunger, or climate change, not in a philanthropic way, but as a means to be economically sustainable and competitive for the long term? I am privileged to be part of an exceptional program with exceptional students who one day will chart the course for how businesses operate. The Harvard College has a Center of Supply Chain Innovation, and our goal is to advance knowledge and thought leadership through research and teaching. And our corporate partnerships are key to meeting these objectives. And we work with some fantastic companies. For instance, we work with DHL, a global logistics company, and y'all, they move trucks and airplanes around. That's what they do. And they have a 2050 carbon neutral goal. So I asked the president of DHL North America, how, how in the world are you going to do this? And he said, you know, it's going to take innovation breakthroughs and it's going to take technology. But he also said that this goal is completely reorienting everyone's thinking and activity and decisions. And the company is now willing to make long-term investments to get there. Another company that we are partnered with is Georgia Pacific. They're a pulp and paper company, and they source timber and operate hundreds of plants and mills. Right now, they are producing 50% of the energy to run these massive operations that they have on site by taking biomass waste and converting it to energy. Another new sponsor of our, our uh, center is BBB Industries. And this is one of the coolest, most sustainable companies you've never heard of right here in Alabama. BBB remanufactures auto parts, millions of them a year. Their entire business model is based on circular economy thinking. They put old cars back into old car parts back into production, with the end result being a like new part. This amazing business model diverts landfill waste. It reduces raw material extraction. It reduces emissions. And guess what? They're very profitable doing it. And so, I'm going to say this, and some of y'all are going to think I'm heretic, but Walmart. That $500 billion global giant is using its market power to scale sustainable practices that are it's changing industries. Their recent initiative is called Project Gigaton, and they aim to avoid 1 billion metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions from their global scope 3 supply chain. So just to explain what that means, this would be equivalent to removing over 200 million cars from U.S. highways a year. That's scary. So make no mistake, companies are screaming for renewable energy. One of the big pushes that Walmart has is 
around energy. And traditional utility companies have not been able to meet demand for the company's um, in renewable energy needs. So, companies are finding market-based solutions. Companies are entering into long-term power purchase agreements, PPAs is what we call them. Uh, and it allows corporate buyers to invest in renewable energy projects. Schneider Electric, the big global, just launched recently the NEO Network. Uh, it's managed by a friend of mine. Um, and he has a team of energy experts who created a collaborative, educational, virtual community where renewable energy buyers can learn about market-based opportunities. Now, state governments have to create a competitive market-based environment for purchasing renewable energy, and guess who ranks dead last? On the ease in which companies can purchase renewable energy. Yeah. Alabama has huge barriers for renewable energy sourcing. Companies are making location decisions based on their need to meet renewable energy targets. And our state will be left out in the cold if things don't change. So we really need to push our elected officials to create a market-based and competitive marketplace for renewable energy. But on the better news, this series was about the essence of a changing world. The Harvard College also has a strong emphasis on entrepreneurship. And it can be a force for good and a great model for inclusive capitalism. It's an approach to bringing about change when change is hard. I'm here to attest that entrepreneurs can and will change the world. They drive new ideas and products. They disrupt existing technologies. Among other things, Harvard hosts the Entrepreneurship Summit, where we recognize and connect business leaders and innovators. So because I love logistics and supply chain, I want to tell you about a company called Zipline. This 30-year-old young man is the CEO, and he had a dream to deliver basic access to medicine to all people, no matter how hard it was to reach them. He started and launched his company in Rwanda. And using drone technology, Zipline supplies more than half of Rwanda's blood supply. Blood delivery has been cut from five hours to 30 minutes using drones and these wonderful little packages attached to a simple parachute. This company is saving lives and their reach just extended into Ghana. Want to know how the company has grown so quickly in three short years? Capital investment. The company raised $225 million in funding and it has currently a market value, value of $1.2 billion. That means scale. When the founder talks about his mission, he is quick to say that philanthropy has nothing to do with it. Because Zipline is a profit-driven business, it is solving social, this particular social problem and simultaneously generating economic value and creating jobs. This makes the business sustainable and scalable. And he says he feels strongly about addressing the misperception that the company is a charity because, as he correctly states, entrepreneurship is the only force in human history that has lifted millions of people out of poverty. So many of you are working on scientific breakthroughs and innovative technologies that can create sweeping change for it. I'm amazed at what's going on in Auburn. And the world needs more of you, but the world needs business too. What fuels innovation is profitability and capital investment. The ability to scale a solution to the masses. Business is part of the answer. And we get it now. I fundamentally believe 
believe that the purpose of business education is to prepare students to embrace business opportunities in a changing world that improves people's lives. Thank you.